Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. We're moving from Apapa now to talk generally about security, abductions, kidnappings, banditry and the likes um, that have, of course, been in the last few years, you know, top five biggest words or mostly used words in Nigeria. Um, and, of course, um, you know, the government's efforts at reading the country of insurgents, of kidnappers and of bandits. Nigerians across board have said that security agencies have failed to tackle this menace and, of course, uh, you know, called them out for their inconsistency and, of course, their failures over time. We're speaking this morning with uh, Mr. Mike Ijo, former director at uh, the Department of State Services. Good morning. Thanks very much for joining us, Mr. Ijo. Thank you for having me. All right. Um, I'm going to start with um your assessment since of course uh, you you you've you know stepped away from the dss i want to get your assessment your honest assessment of the efforts by nigeria's intelligence agencies the dss the nia and the likes and the role that they i expected to have played with regards um intelligence gathering infiltrating camps um, finding out more about the leaders of these kidnapped gangs and the insurgent groups and, um, you know, killing them, you know, from the inside. Well, not killing these people, but you, you, bringing these groups down from the inside. I want to get your assessment. Do you think that they've done well enough? Well, I think um, uh, with uh, your heading, uh, this is my first time of appearing on your television and saying Nigerians are accused security agencies of ineffectiveness. That's an unfair assessment. And uh, I don't know what yastic you use in arriving at such uh, a conclusion. But, uh, but again, uh, we must accept and have security challenges in the country. And that our security agencies including the security intelligence uh, service, which is the state uh, should be encouraged to do more because I'm aware that uh, they have been doing so much to the best of their ability. I'm, I'm not here to begin to assess the state security. But again, I, I, as an insider, I'm aware of the uh, being made by, by the state security service in providing the required Now, what is intelligence? We look at, it's an end product of uh, information that on that one process and uh, disseminated to the end. The question is, if we have the necessary intelligence, how is it being used by the end user? Have they been able to put it in effect has there been political interference using such uh, intelligence? So the problem should not be solely on the, the state security or the intelligence government, like the National Intelligence Agency, for instance, but on the usage of the product. And how do you collect intelligence? It's through the assistance and efforts of members of the public. Are we as Nigerians playing our role by assisting the security agencies to get the required information, which would now be turned to intelligence? So we should not leave all this into our security. So if we are saying that security agencies uh, are failed, uh, are ineffective, we should take part of the blame in the we should take part of the blame for failing in our civic responsibilities by assisting uh, various security agencies. No, so, so, uh, and apologies, I'm going to, you know, go back to, you know, same question. Um, so, w from what you're saying, or are you saying that it's not necessarily a failure of intelligence gathering, it's not a failure of the DSS or the NIA, it is a combination of all of this, you know, of course, and also the um, end user, like you also said, um, failing to make the best use of the intelligence that has been provided. Um, is, is that where the problem is very likely is? Uh, you are coming in part. The, the network is not very good, but if I get to uh, what, uh, what we have just said, that, uh, like I said, the, the, the most important thing is the user. 
The STTS, for instance, is not an action agency. It's an intelligence agency. You gather the intelligence, share with your various citizens. That's where collaboration comes in. And I must tell you that for now, as, uh, we have had a lot of improvement in interagency relations. For instance, in the Boko Haram, uh, the, the first kidnap record in Nigeria, which was Chibok, there was sufficient intelligence that this incident was going to take place, but it was underestimated, which led to uh, this, uh, the first uh, kidnap of Chibok girls. And uh, we have continued to record uh, such kidnaps, especially in schools had becomes a problem, a big challenge to us, that we must, as a country, together, see what we can do to bring this to a Okay. Mr. Um, I'm, I'm glad you brought in the issue of the Chibok abduction. And in recent time, we've seen a rise in just how many abductions were seen in the country. One recorded this year and another one in December. Why do you think children in, in northern Nigeria especially are being targeted? Well, you see, there are some reasons for the targeting of schools in the north. If you recall that um, the Boko Haram has been preaching against the Western education, although they have on well, my own part, I don't know whether the security agencies have been able to establish a link between Boko Haram and uh, these bandits, because they cannot be tied. The bandits on their own, which are mainly their reasons are mainly economic, cannot be targeting schools if they don't have a link. You also recall that the the other um, I can't remember now the one in Kasina or, or uh, in uh, Zafara. The Jangi Boko Haram came out openly to claim responsibility before the bandits dissociated themselves from that. So there's a likely link between the Boko Haram and uh, the bandits. Bandits, generally, their purpose is economic. That is, they are after making money. And what do they use this money for? Bandits are a group of uh, organized criminals involving in, uh, uh, kidnapping, robbery, raping, and all what have you. And it's now been prevalent in the northwest, northwest states of Niger, Zamfara, Kasena, and recently Sokoto. So uh, there must be a reason behind this rise in the uh, offset, which I believe our security agencies too are working, to establish, most importantly, the link between Boko Haram and uh, the bandits, because if you see that the the, the rise of a kidnap of school children in uh, the northeast is going down, why it is also rising in uh, in the northwest. So there's a possibility that the fleeing Boko Haram members are joining forces with uh, with the bandits in the northwest to wreak havoc and ensure that people don't go to school. Okay. Well, well uh, it, it, it's, I, I believe there's people who would argue that, you know, uh, kidnapping, you know, young Nigerians wouldn't necessarily um, be effective in, you know, in, in reducing the interest in going to school. You know, there's other, you know, approaches that we maybe could have uh, been looked into. But um, I, I want to, you know, ask about, you know, once again, with regards to uh, kidnapping, you mentioned Chibok. Um, when Chibok happened, it was a, a completely, um, you know, humongous story across the world. Um, now you've also mentioned that we've now seen an increase in these kidnappings. And it's not just about school children now. Nigerians, 19 were kidnapped yesterday. It's in the news this morning. Um, there's stories of 50, 30, 20 travelers everywhere, you know, that, that, that you know, continuously are kidnapped. What do you think is or we are lacking, you know, in order to rid the country um, of this ease at which these bandits kidnap um, Nigerians, not just school children now? 
Because you also mentioned that there's better interagency relationship. So what exactly are we lacking here? Yeah, what we're lacking, there are so many things we're lacking. I, I can tell you that uh, funding of security is inadequate in Nigeria. That's a known fact. But we shouldn't be ham hammering on it like broken records. Everybody is talking, there's no saying that there are no sufficient funds. It's not only security, the general gamut of our economy, the political space, we don't have sufficient funding. But people are more worried because security is the primary purpose of government. Without security, there won't be any meaningful development. So we must prioritize, I continue to emphasize, that we must prioritize our security. Especially in terms of all these banditry insurgency that are sophisticated. These are people who are operating with uh, sophisticated weapons, including uh, rocket launchers. So Nigeria alone cannot solve this problem. In addition to the mobilization of the people to at least know their responsibilities to the government and to our security agencies, I must also advise that uh, government collaborates with other uh, nations in terms of su uh, supply of uh, technological equipment like drones, you recall what happened when an American was kidnapped uh, and uh, how America deployed all their resources to ensure that their citizen is uh, released, killing some of the kidnappers and they successfully freeing uh, the, 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 the victim. This cannot happen if we don't have the necessary technological tools to pursue this. So we need to intensify more efforts. Luckily for us, Nigerians have been calling for the rejig of the security architecture. We have new hands on board. So we expect to that uh, they should come up with uh, new approaches, new tactics in uh, fighting this, uh, uh, this culture. And uh, I also want to specially commend uh, the chief of army staff. You remember when Marty was taking over? And he gave a 48-hour ultimatum that this people should go and recover them, which was done. So what was it that was done that enabled us to achieve this result? We must work to intensify on those areas where we make success and uh, improve on, our, on, our, on the gains, consolidating on the gains which we have also made. So I want, to, I want, uh, I want us as Nigerians to give our security agencies the necessary support and encourage to enable them to support on what sources we have ever achieved. Okay, I, I know we've talked about on the funding of the security sector in Nigeria, but for the 2021 budget of 13 trillion naira, the Defence Ministry gets the lion's share, 838.5 billion naira out of the 2021 budget. So do we expect or should we be expecting that this fund to be better utilized and that the lives and property of Nigerians to be better secured in this year and going forward? There has been a steady increase in budgetary allocation for security. But it's not sufficient to do the budget without following up and monitoring it. This is Nigeria. The operators of the security agencies too are Nigerians. There's corruption everywhere. The National Assembly will look up to you to play game before your budget is passed. Even when the budget is passed, we still have lack of uh, release of the necessary. At times, you see less than 50% of the budget is released. So what is the sense? What sense does it make if you, if you make such a budget and uh, without a uh, cash backing of less than 50%. It doesn't make any sense. So it's not sufficient to make the budget. Yes, we agree that there has been steady growth or an uh, increase in budget, but we must also monitor the implementation of that budget to see whether it's being complied with in line with the budgetary demands. Be before we get to the National Intelligence Agency and the DSS, um, I want your thoughts on how the Nigerian police force, how the Nigerian security, um, NSCDC um, and, and the likes, those 
community base and the closest ones to the people have fared? Would you also blame, um, you know, would you also say it's lack of funding that has reduced their effectiveness over time? It's not only lack of funding. Yes, lack of funding is one of the challenges being faced by the Nigerian police and the worst is the civil defense. Now, in addition to ineffective policing in Nigeria, which is not as a result of failure on part of the police, but failure in implementation and operations, we are practicing federalism. How do we expect a centralized police in a federal system like the Nigerian police to be effective? Others are taking and giving from Abuja before, before uh, implementation of certain directives. Now, you are operating an environment where you are not even familiar with. You don't know the culture of the people. You carry somebody from uh, Sokoto, for instance, and go to Bias, and carry somebody from Bias, and go to Bidukri. You have language differences, you have uh, cultural differences, you have religious differences. There's no confidence. You have to gain the confidence of members of the public for you to even get information from them. So with this attitude and conduct, I'm not blaming the police. The police is too centralized. We need to localize the police because the security challenges in Nigeria are local. I must be solved locally through local solutions. That's the only way to go. And the only way we can do it is to create state police. A lot of, and I'm happy that the vice president also has keyed into it. The National Assembly, a lot of people have keyed into it. So the government should take the initiative to ensure that the constitution is amended to enable us to have state police, which will be to the grassroots. You see what happened? It has the challenges. We agree. No problem, no, no doubt about that, that uh, uh, creation of state police must have its challenges, just like the Nigerian police is also having its own challenges. But okay. that's the only way to go for us to, to move out of this present quagmire. All right, Mr. Ejiofo, lastly, there's been a controversy surrounding ransom payment. You know, these... Uh, kidnappers and abduct and uh, uh, bandits basically kidnap schoolgirls, demand ransom in some cases, and the government in some cases also deny paying ransom, but then we hear reports that ransom was paid. From a security standpoint, you know, talking about Nigeria and the history we've had with terrorism, is paying ransom to bandits and criminals the way to go? Well, you see, uh Governments all over the world, best practices, payment of ransom is condemned and should not be encouraged. But we have our own peculiar nature. The best way to stop payment of ransom is to prevent kidnapping from happening. But if it does happen, whether the government admits that they pay ransom or they did not, I'm aware that ransoms are paid. So, the best way to stop ransom payment is to prevent kidnapping from happening. Okay. Because if your relation or is involved in kidnapping, you wouldn't want the person to die in the process. There are even cases where ransoms are paid and the victims are still killed. So the best thing is to prevent it from happening. And there's no way we can do the magic without improving on our technological support. Okay. Um so, so you're you're confirming that you are aware that government does pay ransom. It's, a, it's, a, it's an open secret. Even though the government will come out to tell you don't pay the ransom, then what was what, the essence of it? Why did the, the kidnappers in the first place kidnap? What was their aim? Was it not to collect money? So doesn't doesn't so it's not me confirming. It's an open secret that ransoms are paid. You are a former uh, director at the DSS. Doesn't or how do you feel when you see these things play out? When you see that there are kidnappings of school children, there are kidnappings of Nigerians. There's a, you know, of course, silence with regards whether ransom is paid or not. But you never get to hear that the kidnappers have been arrested. You never get to hear that the kidnapped gang was busted and people were killed and it's not likely to repeat itself. So it's, it now paints a picture 
that there is still those criminals moving around Nigeria, maybe waiting till they get bored again to kidnap. How do you feel about it as a former DSS director? Uh, you have answered the question by yourself. So how do I feel? The, nobody will feel, feel, feel good about it. It's a very sad development. And uh, like I said, the best way to go about it is to ensure that uh, we put a stop to all these kidnaps. No Nigerian is happy about it. But again, why not encourage it? I, for instance, initially maintained the position that ransom should not be paid. But unless you are a victim or your brother or a relation is a victim, you know that you must do everything possible to ensure the safe release of that person. So uh, why not encouraging kidnapping? I should also, I wouldn't also encourage to jeopardize people's lives who are in, in, in captivity. So it's a, it's, a, it's a major problem, a decision that must be taken to ensure that the victim is safe and that, uh, again, we prevent this thing from happening. All right, Mr. Mike Ejo, former Director, Department of State Services, thank you very much for uh, joining us this morning on The Breakfast. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I believe you guys are doing a great job. This is my first appearance on Plus TV. Apart from the initial hitches, I think you're doing great work. Thank, thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. for honoring our invitation. Um, we're going to go on a short break. We're moving to Kwara State next, where there is controversy over uh, to wear hijab or not. A couple of schools, missionary schools in Kwara State at the moment, are shut down as a result of this controversy. And we'll be talking about it after this short break. <laughs>